Good morning, afternoon, evening, night. Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time on the channel, we talked about forgetting memory and distortion. And today we're going to be going into biological basis for memory with Unit 5, Topic 6 of AP Psychology. Whenever you learn new information, the brain goes through changes. These changes often occur at a cellular level. When you learn new information, the neurons in your brain fire and send chemical neurotransmitters into the synapse. Remember, the synapse is the space between two neurons. When this repeatedly happens and the same neuron continuously send messages between each other, it leads to stronger connections between those two neurons. This improves their efficiency and the result is the neuron needs less activation to fire, which allows memories to become stronger and the connection between the neurons to become stronger as well. If we continuously repeat the stimulation, essentially we keep reviewing and practicing the new information, the same neural connections will continue to strengthen and more learning will occur, which leads to stronger memory. This increased efficiency in the synapse caused by repeated stimulation of one nerve cell that triggers the stimulation of the next cell leads to the creation of memory formation, and it's known as long-term potential. When looking at the brain, we can see that the more you know something, the more neural connections there are in the brain. We can also see the impact of different neurotransmitters on memory as well. Some promote memory by releasing the neurotransmitter glutamate, which helps promote memory creation through long-term potential by strengthening the synaptic connection. While other neurotransmitters like acetylcholine have been linked to age-related dementia, such as all Alzheimer's disease due to memory deterioration. One other important part of the brain to remember when it comes to memory are the hippocampus and the frontal lobe, which deal with explicit memory. Remember from our past videos, the hippocampus is located in the limbic system and it helps with processing explicit memories, but it does not store them there for the long term. If the hippocampus is ever damaged, it may result in a loss of ability to have declarative memory, which is the ability to store and retrieve memory. Whereas implicit memories use the cerebellum and basal ganglia. These parts of the brain help with classical conditioning, and procedural and motor skills. Lastly, remember that the amygdala also is part of the limbic system, and it impacts the creation of memories. You may recall from our previous videos that the amygdala is where we get our emotional reactions from. And when we have a particular shocking or exciting event, the amygdala will help create stronger memories based on the emotional state of an individual. These are called flashball memories because of how vivid they are. Now, that was just a quick overview of some of the different biological components to memory. Now comes the time to practice. Answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section down below. And if you need more help in your AP Psychology class or studying for that national exam, check out my Ultimate Review Pack and the Discord server. They're both great resources that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin and I'll see you next time online.